Now that we know a little bit about how to present our data, let's go into a real example. So here we have some sales data, just very similar to what we had with the data validation video. Uh, the very first thing we're gonna do, we have a lot of data, so we wanna freeze that first row. We're gonna go to view, freeze, one row. And that's going to allow us to keep this top row at the top. So as we scroll, we continue to keep row one right at the top. You can actually do that with rows or columns and you can see you can kind of do it one row, two row or pretty much anywhere you like in, the spread, in your spreadsheet. Uh, after we do that, we wanna make sure our data looks a little bit better. So we're gonna go to format, alternating colors and we're just gonna pick one of these. I like the green one here, that looks pretty good. So now we have a, a much better and much more presentable set of data, but maybe we also want to call a few things out. Maybe we want to identify, uh, you know, we're having a sale on a particular product. Uh, let's go ahead and select this column. We'll go to format, conditional formatting, and let's say anywhere where we have a value that is 10332, we're going to make that a custom format. We'll make it black background, white text, and bold. So you can see here, we call that out explicitly wherever we have this 10332. And maybe we wanna do something similar with our prices. Maybe we wanna see those on some kind of gradient as well so we can see our large, pr our high prices and some low prices. So we'll go ahead and add a new role and we will select the color scale and we will, let's go ahead and we'll use a different, uh, we'll apply it to, that's a good range and we'll use a different uh, set of colors here. So maybe we wanna have something like uh, this white to green. So our, our biggest prices are the biggest green which kind of makes sense when you're thinking about prices. So now we have, uh, we have a pretty good view here and we have some color indicators to identify exactly what we have. So let's go ahead and validate our data. I'm gonna go ahead and select column two and then I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom of my spreadsheet and select data validation. And I'm going to make sure that this is a date and we're gonna make sure it's on or after. If we scroll all the way up here, we can see that our Late, our earliest date is January 17th. So we'll make sure that everything is January 17th or later. And we'll show a warning and you know, we'll go ahead and add the validation text and we hit save. Everything that's here now is okay, but we're gonna, you know, as we enter new dates, we wanna make sure that we don't accidentally put something in like 111, you know, which is gonna be before where we were. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, for our store location, well, let's go ahead and create some store locations. So we're going to validate this as well, and we're going to, you know, we'll hold down shift, and I'm going to move page down here so I can go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to go to uh, data validation, and I'm going to select a list. Well, I could select a list from a range, uh, or I can select a list of items. For now, we'll just select a list of items. So I'm going to scroll back all the way to the top and I'm going to enter my store names, Main Street, uh, 8th Avenue, Lexington Avenue, and let me see, 3rd third, third Street here. Okay, here we will reject the input because we don't have any of those, and we will also uh, show that drop-down list so it's easier to select. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and you can see now all of those values look okay. We're gonna make sure that we have a five digit number here. So we're going to validate our product column. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of those values. We're going to go into data validation. Uh, we're going to make sure that this is a number and that it is between, well, these are all five digits. So let's take a look at those. We're gonna see uh, 15207. So we wanna make sure it's somewhere between 10,000 and 99999. There we go. So everything should be one of these values and we'll also reject that input because we don't have any numbers that are that value. Uh, now we'll go ahead and we'll, say, we'll add validation help text. Uh, just so, you know, enter a valid product code between 10,000 or 10,000 and 99,999. We'll go ahead and save that. So now we have, uh, we have all of these values should be okay and we wanna make sure our prices are okay as well. So we'll go ahead and add some data validation. Looks like everything that we sell is somewhere between 495 and 795. So just to make sure we'll, we'll add validation to this column. We'll go all the way down again, go to data validation and we will select number that is you know, less than, we'll say $10. We're gonna make sure that we don't sell products less than $10. And we'll show a warning just to make sure that that's, you know, that's pretty obvious and we save that. So now when we enter new values into our spreadsheet, we should see, we should get some assistance here. So if I say uh, 121, I'm okay. 
if I select a value here from our store that we have, if I enter a code, if we enter 10332, that's automatically going to be formatted. And maybe I accidentally enter an 11 here. Well, I get this error and it says, oh, that's, that's probably not okay. So let's go ahead and enter a better price for that. We'll say 495. So that gives us some basic ability to, to take a look at the data that's in here, but maybe we want to actually report on this. Maybe we want to use some of our filtering and sorting. So right now it looks like everything is sorted by that transaction date, but maybe we want to create a filter view. So let's go into data and we'll create a filter view. And let's create a filter view for each one of our stores so we can see them very quickly. So I'm going to name this one Main Street and I'm going to go ahead and change this so that we only see we're gonna clear and select Main Street now I have all of my Main Street stores and we'll go ahead and change the range so it goes all the way up to a thousand get everything that's in the in there and we're going to close that for filter view out and now I can very easily go into that filter view and I can apply that and take a look at my Main Street store so if I want to do the same thing for say my Lexing Lexington Avenue store I could just go ahead and duplicate this filter view and change that to Lexington. It doesn't actually have to match the value of the filter that we have here, uh, but it just makes it easier, you know, in this case to see exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to uncheck Main Street. I'm going to pick Lexington Avenue. I hit OK. And now we have this filter view as well. So I can now switch very quickly back and forth between my Main Street or my Lexington Avenue location and kind of see exactly what we have selling there and see what the progress is. So pretty easy to kind of take hold of the, the sorting, filtering, and presentation options here for different formatting. Uh, and in this example, hopefully you could see how we could kind of take this basic spreadsheet and, and go a little bit further with it to make it a little bit more useful as we go on. Thanks for watching.